Well guys, welcome back at my modeling PSUs, but today we are watering our GPU. Now why, you might be wondering? Well, because this graphics card is broken and it's giving out green lines. Now, why? Because the user was a heavy smoker and that damages the fins and I have a full video on the channel about why a lot of cars are dying by either this or basically having a fireplace in your house. I do recommend you go check that one out before if you're interested in the causes. But if you don't care about the causes and you just care about trying to fix the car, this is one little unorthodox way in which you can bring back your car from the dead. Now, I want to go too deep regarding the science about this because to be honest, I'm not really sure about the science too much. I have my opinions, but what I know is this fixed a lot of cars for me in the past. And so we're giving it a shot today as well. What we're gonna do is basically wash down the card because Cleaning up the PCB sometimes and putting up new paste, new pads, brings the car back to life. While we're at it, once we're gonna be drying it up, we will also do a slight kind like reflow. Saying reflow is not technically correct because reflow is when you use a proper station to actually resolder your VRAM or your die. But today we're just doing a little reflow with the heat again. Without further ado, yes, this weird method can fix your GPU sometimes. Here's how you do it. Okay, so step one, we like nature here, so we just drop the card on the floor, get the water pump, and then we open it. And then just first off, we give it a light breeze, you know, just to lighten up all the dust. Then we rotate it, make sure to get all the cards, front and back. You want to go right into the ports as well, okay? Right here, right here. And then, watch out. We put it to maximum speed and we start blazing through it. Now you want to ideally block the fan. And then you want to especially insist on the underside of the PC. Okay, so now the first step is done. Now, if you really insist, you can get it all done uh, just here outside as well. But if you really want to do it the right way, uh, it's not just a matter of using the garden hose because you're supposed to use that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, YouTube is gonna flag me because I'm saying garden hose. Anyways, basically what you want to do is drop this into a bucket of water because in this way we can use more family friendly terms when speaking about it okay so let's go ahead and do just that okay so an important step that nobody tells you is you want to use hot water not cold water okay because it just gets the gunk out better so what i do is i just get some hot water here and then i use some liquid soap and i just drop it into it then once it's pretty much full we basically dip it into water Okay, so at this point what you want to do is agitate it a bit. I like to flip it around a bit. You basically just want to drop it up and down as if you were washing clothes pretty much. Because you want the soapy water to go everywhere in the car, you know? Now some of you uh, will probably be concerned about the bearings in the fans, but you can just re-lubricate them in the end. But very often water doesn't even get in there. Uh, and if it does, the oil is actually hydrophobic, so it's not really a problem. Uh, but again, I have a tutorial on how to re-loop the fans in case they go uh, and get a bit noisy. So yeah, you just do this for a while, to be honest, and then we'll come back. Now, after all that, I like to leave it dipped for at least a few hours. Then you come back, again, this is really important, at least two hours. You come back, you wash it down, and then you let it dry up. Now, the dry up process is actually very much more complicated than people think. Uh, but the first step is to just leave it outside for a while, if it's summer. If it's winter, just put it inside and just let it dry, naturally, okay? Just for at least a few days, and then we'll come back. Okay, so we have left it there for a while. It's now time to wash it. So now it's all soapy, right? So you wanna grab it without uh, spilling water everywhere. And then just wash it down pretty much with uh, tap water because you want to get rid of all the soap because um, the soap is not going to dry out with your cars actually so it might be hurtful if you don't do this and then once you made sure that there is no soap left and the car just has some water in it you want to just basically lay out to dry and then come back the next day okay so it's now the day after and the gpu is very warm and dried up so now we can start with the proper drying up process so step one 
is actually to use some compressed air, so let's go. Now the reason we are doing this is not really to clean the car because it's already clean, but it's more to check that it's actually dry because if you see any kind of drops of water it means it's too early and you need to leave it outside for more, but also because sometimes some things get trapped in so we can get rid of them. So. So in this case, nothing came out. It means it's very dried up and we can move forward to the next step. Okay, so for the next step, we have to actually disassemble the card. Now you don't need to wear gloves. And here is the inside of the car. Now the reason I'm wearing gloves is to take out those terrible thermal pads. So as you can see, even though we've washed the car, the paste hasn't gone anywhere. So this is for all the people that say that you should first disassemble the car. As you can see, you don't need to, even though we dipped it literally in water, you don't actually have to. But what you have to do now is first off, you disassemble it and get rid of all the paste and pads, the old ones, of course, and then we're gonna heat up this car. First off, to clean it better, but also because it does kind of like a reflow. By the way, take notes of the measure of the thermal pads. In this case, it's one millimeters all around and half a mil on the BRMs. So now with no thermal pads remaining, just you wanna really, and I mean really, use isopropyl alcohol and just go all over basically the whole car because there is gonna be a little bit of dust remaining. It's gonna be filthy. Now this is not gonna fix the card, obviously. You clean up the, the actual heat sink, but it's just a good measure, you know, just bring it to be brand new. Just go over on it for a while. As you can see, it definitely needs it. Okay, so we've kinda cleaned up the front, but uh, we have still the back to do, and also the front isn't finished yet. Now the backplate on these Zota cars from the GTX 1000 series is not an active backplate, it's just there for aesthetics, but we wanna take it off just because we're gonna be doing a little bit of a reflow on the car and we wanna clean it up properly. Now, what we also wanna do is, well, clean up the backplate of course, but basically use some isopropyl alcohol on the PCB because alcohol is hydro repellent, so it will push out the remaining water. Okay, so we're back outside just for ease of use and we're basically just dipping some of it on top of the card. This seems random, but it's kind of not, to be honest. And uh, some on the ports because water gets trapped in there and some on the back. Now we just clean it up properly and let it dry. Now the card is pretty much ready to be heated up now, but if you take a look closely, you can clearly see where the memory chips and most importantly, the thermal pads have leaked, as you can see on the VRAMs as well. Now this, Sometimes it doesn't damage the GPU, but uh, if it is so much soaked that it filters through the PCB, there's a very high chance it's gonna damage your PCB, which is why you should replace your pads regularly, which is why I have the video about it. You should do it like probably once every three to four years. It's not that often, but you should do it. This car is like seven years old, never been done that. We can clearly see the results, but hey, let's heat it up. Okay, so last step is actually to heat it up. Now I have a heat gun and this is kind of like a reflow, but I don't want to tell you guys how to do it, but I'm setting it to six out of nine, which is supposed to be like 600 degrees two thirds, and then putting it to max speed and I'm doing it for like five minutes in circular motions, okay? But uh, basically you can also use a hair dryer and you just wanna heat up the car a bit. Let's go. And here we are with the GPU fully repadded with Arctic pads. Again, full guide in the channel if in case you wanna take a look at that. Now we're applying some fresh new paste, closing it up and actually checking if, uh, well, what we've done worked all, you know? So now you can spread the paste here if you want to be extra sure, but me, I'm just kind of putting too much because it's not going to damage uh, really anything. And uh, yeah, reconnecting everything and closing up. Perfect. Okay, so now finally testing time. It took us a while, but let's see if it works, okay? Okay, so the start is good. We have a signal, too early to celebrate, obviously. And it's still broken, as you can see. So unfortunately, it's not that easy, but let's move on to the conclusions. And here we are with the conclusions. Now, unfortunately, this time, all this process didn't work, but here at Emotion PSUs, they wanna keep it basically as truthful as possible with everything to do with tech. 
So I'm not gonna pretend that it worked, even though it didn't, like many channels do, unfortunately. But this whole method is the only way to bring back one of these cards to life properly. Now, what should we do if we really wanted this card back to working? Now it's looking like it's brand new, it's not smelling bad anymore. So the only thing left to do would be to bring it to a professional and have them basically resolder the broken VRAM chip. If you've seen the video this far, come on, drop a like and maybe subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot. Really. Now, an interesting thing is, as you can see, after all the process and the reflow, the artifact on the screen changed a bit. What that means is the reflow and everything we did wasn't actually useless. It changed something. So if we were to insist by reflowing the card again, we might eventually be able to make it work. However, the chances of also burning a component are there and it has happened to me before. So maybe, yes, I will try another time just clean up the paste and give it another shot. But for me, this card is gone, pretty much. But if we find some guy who can do a reflow for us, we'll maybe do it and show it to you guys working again. Reflows are not too expensive, so you might think about it. But if you have a broken GPU that's giving out green lines, you might want to try these steps because they worked for me in the past. Now, one last thing you guys probably want to ask me before we close it up is what's the percentage of success rate of this thing? And I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. It is about a 25% chance. So one GPU every four, you will bring back with this method, but three out of four, you're gonna just waste your time. But if you have a broken one and you have some spare time, you wanna give it a shot, here's how you do it, okay? So again, for more videos like this and for the initial video covering up the card and why it broke, they're on my channel. We do undervolting, overclocking, crazy mods. You might like the content. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.